All right, in this video, we're going to go through an example with exchanges of non-monetary assets. So what we talked about is this idea of commercial substance. And commercial substance tells us that when we exchange one asset for another, but it increases our revenue or our economic position over time, then we will book automatically the loss or the gain when that transaction happens or that exchange happens, okay? So we're gonna go through an example here that we got through in class, but a little bit more kind of depth and detail um, for this video so that you can kind of understand it on your own time. So let's go through this example here. Um, Mickey Mouse Inc. trades a used piece of equipment for a new one from Donald Duck Inc. So Mickey has a piece of equipment. Donald Duck sells that equipment. Mickey Mouse decides to see if he can trade, okay? and get something better. So this is exactly kind of like a car dealership. I have a car, I go to the car dealership and I say, okay, give me a trade in value for my car and then I'll buy a new car from you, okay? So the used equipment has a book value of $12,000. So book value of $12,000. If you don't remember from financial accounting, we get book value from taking the purchase price minus accumulated depreciation. So we purchased it for $20,000. we have already accumulated $8,000. Therefore, the book value is $12,000. That's how much it's worth in the books. Okay. Now, according to Beckett Services, this is a third-party valuation service, the fair market value of the equipment is $5,000. So, this service company says, okay, it's really only worth five. It's not worth twelve. So that has an that's an issue of just estimating correctly what depreciation should have been over time. We didn't get that right. But that's okay. The new piece of equipment lists for fifteen thousand dollars. So I don't know if it's because the prices went down or they're downgrading or whatnot. But fifteen thousand dollars is the list price for the piece of equipment Donald Duck has decided to give Mickey Mouse in this trade. And then Donald Duck Inc. has given Mickey Mouse Inc. a $8,000 trade in value, okay? So yes, it's worth 5,000, but we'll let you trade it in and get $8,000 in trade in value. Now you might say, well, that stinks. Why would you do that? The reason why might be more of a competitive marketing standpoint in, in that Donald Duck says, look, there's profit in here, a lot of profit. Let me make it a good enough deal where they go, hey, look, it's only worth five. I can get five on the street or they can give me 8,000, but they'll only give me the 8,000 if I buy from them. So that's more of a marketing technique. There's profit here, so they're able to offset some of the loss here and the profit here. Or maybe there's some repair issues here. Donald Duck can spend a little bit more money and then at the end of the day, they could sell this for let's say 10,000 if they just make the uh, repairs versus Mickey Mouse just wants a new one and doesn't want to pay for the repairs. Either way, okay? so. The question says complete the journal entry for this transaction. So we're going to complete the journal entry with a commercial substance and knowing that there's a loss. Why is there a loss? There's a loss because the book value says 12, fair market value says 5. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what the cost of the new equipment. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, the cost of the equipment is $15,000. Well, Gap says, okay, it's $15,000, but Donald Duck was able to give him more than he actually got or worth of his equipment. So we can't just barely do that, okay? So we have this way of calculating it here. Um, we'll go through each one of them and kind of figure out what that cost of that new equipment is. So the other thing to think about it is that this $15,000 may be an inflated price. So it's not actually what the cost of the equipment would have been, but they've inflated it so much so they can get people in. And then the trade in value goes a little bit higher to get them to buy it. So whatever the case is, we got to calculate it differently. So first thing we're going to calculate is the list, the list price for the new item. So the list price is $15,000 for the new item. And we're going to subtract in our trade in value. So our trade in value is $8,000. And so now we have a difference of $7,000. So, you know, Donald Duck says, I'm not just going to give you this piece of equipment and then call it an even trade. So you're going to have to pony up some cash. Well, $7,000 is what uh, Mickey Mouse is going to have to give to Donald Duck for this equipment. So $7,000. Now what's the fair market value of the new used equipment? Well, the fair market value is $5,000. Okay. So really the cost of the new equipment is $12,000.
not 15. Okay, the 3,000 difference is just because whatever marketing techniques or, or whatnot here. So in this case, the cost of the new equipment is $12,000 especially for Mickey Mouse because really Mickey Mouse gave up a $5,000 equipment, paid $7,000, and now he gets us $12,000, okay? So that gets us our new equipment, so we would debit equipment. And I'm gonna put new here just so that we can get, just so that we can understand that. New equipment for $12,000 because that's what we're receiving, right? Okay, so now that we have that, we have to get rid of the old okay, historical costs, and we also have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation because that asset is gone. So one of the things is when we dispose of an asset, we also get rid of its historical costs, and then we also get rid of its accumulated depreciation account. At the end of the day, that will either cause a gain or a loss. Hopefully a gain, but typically more often than not, it's a loss. So, to get rid of, remember that this is a debit right now in our books. This is a credit right now in our books, okay? So we know debits go first, so in order to get rid of this, it's already at a credit of $8,000. We know from journal entries and T accounts that in order to get rid of this accumulated depreciation, I'm going to debit $8,000 to the accumulation depreciation account. So, accumulated depreci debit accumulated depreciation for equipment of $8,000. Now, one thing to know, just because I showed you this example doesn't mean that you're going to take whatever is in the account and then debit it. Remember, if you have 50 equipments, you're not going to debit all of the accumulated depreciation. You're only gonna debit the accumulated depreciation associated with the disposal of the equipment, okay? All right, so that gives us th those debits. We've got another debit that we're gonna skip for now, but let's go to the credit. The credit, well, we need to get rid of this. So remember, equipment right now for this equipment is debit 20,000. So how do we get rid of it? We credit it 20,000 over here. So equipment, New, or old, sorry, for $20,000, okay? And then what else did we have to give up? Well, we had to give up $7,000 in cash. So we're gonna credit cash for $7,000. We should be done. The problem is our debits don't equal our credits. Our credits say $27,000, our debits says 20,000, so we've got $7,000 missing, and that is from the loss, okay? So here's an example here. Now, again, this is a plug issue, so we could just plug it, uh, loss on disposal of equipment. Okay, of $7,000, we could have done that, that's just the plug. To, or we could have calculated it, check it. So the fair market value of, it, of the used equipment, well the fair market value was 5,000. The book value was 12. Five minus 12 gives us $7,000, okay? So that's how we calculate it. Um, the loss on disposal, loss on disposal over there. So that's how we would do the journal entry for an exchange in, a, in in a case of a commercial substance, it has commercial substance, and there is a loss. Now, flip, flip, the, flip the equation a little bit. What about if it's a gain? Well, same thing here. You would do everything the same thing here. The only thing is, is this would not be here, and in this case, it would be a credit to gain of whatever, okay? So if it's a gain, and it has commercial substance, same procedures here, except you would have a gain there. You wouldn't have a loss debit. You would just have a gain credit. So again, if it was $7,000 difference, then the 7,000 would have gone there instead of there, okay? So that is the example that we went in class that gives you a little bit more understanding about a commercial substance example when there is a loss situation. Like I said, gain, switch it, and then you're okay.